Okay, hi, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the FX Street uh, webinar. My name's Ian Coleman. I'm one of the directors and analysts at um, PIA First. We supply banks, hedge funds, retail traders with uh, technical analysis and uh, trade recommendations. Um, it's basically we're all trained up in, uh, in technical analysis, uh, analysis um, through the uh, Society of through the STA, the Society of Technical uh, Analysts, uh, and then we've also developed our own. Good morning. Let's get rid of that. We've also delay. Uh, we've also developed our own grey box system, uh, which highlights uh, support and resistance, um, not just in currency pairs, but over an array of uh, of different products, including fixed income, um, single stocks, stock indices, commodities, etc. Um, so every two weeks, I come back. We start talking about uh, dollar majors. We have a a very large emphasis on uh, on the dollar index. Okay, and we basically discuss where we think um, prices are likely to go over the next two weeks. What the bias is, what support and resistance levels should, we should be looking at, and what sort of chart formations we uh, we think are building. Um, first thing that I do, well, over the weekend, I always break down all the all the chart formations anyway. So. I'll go to, I've got two different software packages. I use the Saxo uh, Trader, basically for vanilla charts. So charts that have got no data on them whatsoever, no indicators. Um, I then use uh, Aspen charts, which have an FXCM feed, uh, which I have all my sort of system um, where it highlights support and resistance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, personally, I also look, like to look to DMARC um, Tom DeMarc for exhaustion points, uh, correction points, um, and basically to, to highlight where I should be looking to um, to buy or sell uh, different currency pairs. Um, DeMarc, I think it's quite it's quite a it's a great tool for me because um, I struggle with counter trend trades. Okay, we've obviously been in the market quite a long time, um, and as we all know, the mantra is the trend is your friend, uh, etc. And cut your losses, run your winners, and all these different sayings that we that we have. But one of the hardest things to do in uh, in trading is is to actually step in front of that that train or that bus because nobody wants to get flattened. But what DMARC does. If you have a decent support or resistance level, obviously nines and thirteens, nines are correction counts, thirteens are exhaustion counts, and it gives you that 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 confidence to actually say, yeah, well, I think I am right here. I think it's going to stop. It's going to turn around, etc., etc., etc. And another reason why I particularly like DMARC is because all the great analytical um, people, if you like. Um, over the last sort of century, um, haven't just concentrated on price action, but they've also concentrated on time. If you look at the GAN theory, the GAN wheel was always about time. You know, we talk about GAN and the fact that he could predict where copper was going to be, but it wasn't just where copper was going to close. It was where copper was going to close on a certain day. So he devised um, a system that highlighted support and resistance levels, but didn't just highlight support and resistance levels, but highlighted them at a certain time. If you look at uh, Fibonacci, uh, you know, Fibonacci also has a time span. So it's not just these are extension levels and these are support levels, but also, you know, how many candles or how many bars it should take uh, to get to that support and resistance. Um, so that's sort of the system uh, that I look at. Um, I'm predominantly trade uh, trend following, uh, but I'm also quite happy to buy uh, dips or to, to to counter trend if you like, as long as the uh, the risk reward is ample. Um, today, I suppose you could say that we're looking at a long term trend. We bought euro dollar, we've bought some sterling dollar, we've bought euro sterling. So we've bought all of those uh, free cross currencies or the free 
one cross currency, two major currency pairs on dips this morning. We're going to explain uh, why we've uh, why we've bought dips. So basically, what I do over the weekend is I, I, I like to clear all my charts, or I like to get most of um, the analysis off off the charts and start afresh, and then I break it down through time frames. So I look at a monthly chart, especially with it being the beginning of really December now. So you look at the, the obviously the, uh, the November candle price action, um, and then you break it down weekly, daily. If we've got any reversal patterns, if we've got any reversal candlestick formations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then we break them down into time frames, and then we look for patterns that highlight whether or not the move lower or move higher is corrective, or if it's impulsive. Uh, if it's impulsive, then obviously we want to be getting on that that trend if it's corrective then we want to wait to, for that corrective dip if you like to to play out until we until we look to take longs uh, so that's what i do most weekends like i said the most it doesn't take long now but i just quickly break down um all the different currency pairs and we cover uh, 13 in total um and then i look to the um to the calendar know what days should I really be aware of what where are the major sort of financial releases obviously we had last week was a barrage of um, of high level uh, economic data obviously we had the ECB shocking on Thursday and then uh, non-farm payroll which was a bit of a non-starter really even though it was a great figure um, I think because the ECB uh, meeting had been it shocked the market so much that I think investors and traders really struggled to to go in and buy dollars, even though that would have been really the trade. Um, had the ECB not um, not not already um, caused the dollar to sell off aggressively on Thursday. So anyway, so we're going to look quickly um, at the diary, and, and the main reason behind this is because um, obviously if there's nothing. Uh, to move the markets, then a lot of the time they will consolidate. A lot of the time we'll get inside days, inside bars, corrective channels, um, etc. So it's it's quite essential, if you like, that you do make yourself aware of what goes comes out. And also, if you're sort of you know if you're buying dips, maybe in, in sterling dollar, and then you know you you're you're not aware that there's financial releases coming out. So you buy a dip, you then in a position where you're long sterling dollar and suddenly it drops 40 points and in, there's been an economic release that you haven't been aware of um, then in situations like that you're you're probably better off from buying breaks so I'm not saying to change your view but just change your level or change the way that you get into that trade so you're not looking to buy in dips you're actually looking to jump on a rally if it breaks a certain level so it is it's essential that we that we're aware of our surroundings uh, so you see, notice today there's really um, nothing in the way of of high tier data. We've got um, Carney's speech at three o'clock, which could set the ball rolling in one direction or the other. Um, I doubt it though. Um, we've got figures overnight. Obviously, I won't be trading those. And then Tuesday, okay, we've got the uh, GDP figures out of uh, the eurozone at ten o'clock. Again, we've got. You know that's been flagged as free, as highly important. But again, it's really got to be, it's got to miss the mark, or it's got to be aggressively better uh, than projected. Really, for 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 that to be a a market moving uh, figure. Um, so you can basically see what I'm trying to get at is there's not a lot out this week. Um, New Zealand dollar again. I won't be trading that. Um, unemployment figures. Out of Australia uh, overnight again midnight. I won't be trading that. Um, Thursday we've got uh, Swiss National Bank rate decision that could be quite interesting. But apart from that, you know, um, and again Friday's Bank of England rate decision. I mean, I think that would probably be a bit of a non-starter because it's it's mainly a, a, about the euro and about the do, um, about the dollar, the US dollar at the moment. So anyway, we're going to drop this off now, and then we'll start looking at. Uh, some of the charts so I just need to change on this screen share which screen I'm sharing I believe okay 
So we're basically going to break down. And I'm just going to move the chat up into another window because I obviously don't want to miss it if somebody's asking questions. I've got three screens and I still struggle to get um, all the data on there when we're doing these uh, these webinars. Because um, I obviously like to have these vanilla charts on one screen, I have a chart uh, on, a, on, a, on a separate screen and then obviously the chat. On the, on the third screen so like we said it's all it's all been about the dollar um, we've had this divergence obviously talking fundamentally between uh, the ECB and um, and the Fed uh, everybody expecting Fed to hike but you know the more the we, we, we posted a report on Saxo uh, trading floor last week and we warned about the dollar. We said this that this dollar doesn't look like it's gonna the dollar doesn't look like it's gonna break to the upside. And the reason was we'd stalled around a Fibonacci level, we'd stalled around a previous high. And if we look to the hourly chart, we were making a an ascending wedge formation which has a bias to break to the downside. So we had all these signals, and also, you know, our analysis is and always has been 90% uh, technical, okay, but we also listen to the news, of course. Uh, you know, we'll have Squawk on all day, um, and we want to know when economic releases are coming out, etc. Um, and we, we wrote a report for Saxo Trading Floor the other day that basically turned around and said, you've got to be careful here. When everybody starts talking about the fact that a commodity, uh, a currency pair, uh, a stock is only going in one direction, it's normally the time when it turns direction. Uh, there's too many buyers or everybody's already bought and the market is then prone to sharp reversal in, in the opposite direction um, and that's obviously what happened on Thursday so we've got this monthly chart okay 150% extension this was really the prime target this was what we were looking for we we're looking for 10208 10210 which was a Fibonacci um, Confluence area, 61.8% pullback uh, of this strong sell-off through 2001-2008, um, and also a 61.8% extension from this 08-09 move. Um, but break down. I haven't done anything with these charts since last um, since the last webinar, so. It, it could be quite interesting what sort of chart patterns we've highlighted. Um, but so we've got this previous high. And again, in a report that we wrote this morning, we've turned around and said there's, there's something for everybody. It's for everybody here. There's something for the bulls, there's something for the bears. Okay, for the bears, we've got uh, a stalling in bullish price action close to a previous high. Is it a double top? Maybe it's stalled close to a previous high, but. For um, what, what should we call it, a pure or a clean uh, technical double top, we've got to break this level here. So we've got to break 92.48. So it's got a long way to move to the downside before we can say that a double top formation is in place. However, what we do have, um, as far as the bears are concerned, we've got a bearish outside week, we've got a bearish outside day. Um, bearish. Out, or outside candles are by far the more most uh, aggressive candles with regards to trend reversal that we can get okay because basically what the, what's happening is the markets taking a new high and then aggressively making a new low you know we took out something like 15 days worth of price action in the process we've now been ticking up uh, we haven't even hit uh, Thursday's uh, Marabuzo level but what we have hit is some of our bespoke resistance, which comes in at 98.81. And what's the high today? 98.86. So it's just spiking up through our, um, our bespoke resistance level. So even though the medium term bias is pretty well mixed, um, the intraday bias has to be to sell into rallies, okay, because of these three factors. The fact, that, the fact that we have outside bars, the fact that we've got an inside day which highlights indecision or lack of upside momentum on Friday. Um, it might not be the call over the medium term, but 
intraday, which is obviously what we're playing today, it has to be the call. Um, support to the downside is obviously um, close to first east low, actually 97.83. But then this area here is going to be critical this week. And we'll just highlight it if we can get the figures up. Because we've got reverse trend line support. We've got reverse trend line support coming in at 96.57. We've got this previous swing high. So as far as Elliott Wave enthusiasts are concerned, this bullish count is still alive. Okay, so you need that bullish count to be broken. So we've got one, two, three, and this could potentially be a choppy fourth wave correction. I don't think so. And we all, you know, talking about going back to the diary, which we were uh, highlighting the, when we started the webinar, there's nothing really to change um, the bias or the sentiment this week, unless we get what we call a news bomb. Uh, and um, I apologize for the crudity of the, uh, the, the, the saying at the moment, with all that's going on around the world but unless we get something like a, um, a large natural disaster or an unnatural disaster um, you know god forbid um, you know a large bombing campaign um, you know we can't predict these things and that's why they're called news bombs okay so if we've got a news bomb we could potentially get a strong move in one direction or, or the other in the dollar um, but at the moment the bias is mildly bearish in today. So we've been looking to buy dips in Euro dollar, Sterling dollar, sell rallies in dollar Swiss. Dolly a bit of a different um, bit of a different fish at the moment, but um, the that dollar bias for selling uh, dollar rallies is is is, is going to be active for the first few days of the week until we get down to, towards that that important level. So we've got 96.84, 96.60 area that's going to be quite strong support. And then we need to have a look to see how price action forms at that uh, at that level before we can really determine what uh, what the medium term outlook is going to be. Um, everybody all right with the dollar index, what we've discussed about the dollar before we go over to the other major currency pairs. It's at this point where I wonder whether or not I'm talking to myself because of the actual uh, <laughs> lack of chat in the uh, in the room, if you like. So this was our um, this is what we discussed before, and basically turned around and said when we had that strong dollar bias, when we were looking for the dollar to move up towards that 61.8% and 161.8 um, extension level, we said, well. The bias has to be to the downside because there's no real indication of a change of trend until last week. Okay, so we obviously have to adapt um, with the market, and the medium term bias was to the downside. We had a, um, a confluence area um, around about uh, one, the big figure, obviously, it's a psychological area as well. Um, the bias has obviously slightly changed. Um, if we look to the daily chart, okay, this was the expanding wedge formation which we talked about for quite some time. We then broke to the downside. We then had a small retest of the trend line, and then we've then, then we've broken lower. You could argue that this could still be. A third wave correction, hardcore um, Elliott wave enthusiast, if you like, might still dictate that that wave count is alive because we still have one, two, aggressive move to the downside, three. But this move back up should be corrective and in a in a in a free wave pattern. And really, looking at the time scale which we we're talking about before, it really should, you know, last maybe three quarters of the month uh, until bears re-emerge and start pushing to the downside. Saying that, you know, we've got the FOMC or the Fed meeting um, in less than two weeks' time. 
and that could obviously, you know, if the Fed do, do do something, then that could flip the bias and we could start heading back down. But as we're saying, we're talking about immediate bias. It's what what's going to happen this week. I mean, this week it's going to be buying dips for euro dollar. Now, if you we can just note here, this was quite an important level. So on the 27th of May, we made a low of around about 108.20. And then if you can look here, uh, this was a low of 108.10, blah, blah, blah. Then it acted again as support and resistance on um, on these two days, which is the 12th um, and the 13th of November. So we know that 108.10 is, is sort of a pivotal area for euro dollar. And then if we break down into shorter time frames, let's just get rid of these. We'll put the daily hourly chart one. Okay. Then well, I'm just going to change my other charts. So basically what we were looking to do this morning, or what we have done this morning, I should say, is we bought a dip in in euro dollar. So we've got that bias. Okay, that um, that the dollar rallies should be limited. So we've also got that bias that um, euro dollar set this euro dollar sell off should be limited. So we're looking for decent risk reward trades, but we're also looking for sort of confluence areas. Okay, areas where we haven't just got a trend line support, but where we've got a trend line support, where we've got a fib level, where we've got some of our bespoke levels, where we've got a marabuzo level. So we try and combine all these uh, different factors into finding a decent area where uh, we'd like to we'd like to buy or sell, and where we'd also um, produce a decent risk reward trade. So. Basically, this morning, this looks like a bearish flag. Could have done with a, a bit more of a rally to the upside before this sell-off first thing. Uh, but if we also put a fib on, it's very close to 38.2% uh, retracement, which is a 108.06. Now, normally, when we get very aggressive moves to the upside, which we obviously had on Thursday, the retracements are mild and limited. The 23.6 is a pretty irrelevant Fibonacci level as far as I'm concerned. 38.2, 50, 61.8, 78.6 are the ones that I concentrate on. We've obviously got 88.6 as well, um, further to the downside, which is quite good for symmetrical patterns. But the reason why we've looked at buying dips, we've actually bought a dip at 108.13 this morning, is because we've also got trendline support, We've got RB spoke support coming in at 108.13. And also, we can sort of hold as quite a decent stop. So if we look at Thursday's price action, we had an open 106.14, uh, a close of 109.38. And basically, to find a Marabuzo level, it's the midpoint from the open and the close. So basically, what we do is go 106. 14, you can get software that does this automatically. 109.38 equals divided by 2. Okay, so 107.76. So remember, we said we're looking for decent risk reward trades. So if we go to here, 107.76. around about there okay so basically we're looking to buy dips around this level um, virtually at, at price at the moment at market stop below the marabuzo level which is only 30 40 ticks um, and then the first target is obviously the top of the channel which comes in 10908 now we have our bespoke resistance also coming in at 109.22, 109.52. So 109.08, 109.22 for the first target. And that makes our risk reward ample, okay? Because we're looking to take two units, take one unit off 109, like we said, one around about the 109, so 10 area, uh, and then trying to, to bleed 
the next unit for, for a higher move to the upside. So basically buying at market and taking some off at 109.10. If or when we get to that level, we then use look to move stop to entry on the um, other 50% of the trade. And then we're basically looking for what we call a bleeder. Um, and then what we'd do, we'd say, well, that is a flag formation, which we can't tell yet. And then basically, to get the target level on a breakout, we take the pole, the flag pole. And then we look for the target level, which is 112.57. Um, according to uh, this software package. Now, that also doesn't look like a particular um, area of, um, of support and resistance, 112.57. The only thing it's close to is the base of a, the weekly Ishimoku cloud, which did actually stop the bulls uh, in their tracks uh, for about five, six weeks in uh, in succession, going back to sort of August, September time. Um, but, you know, the, it's all about risk reward and we're all, in, in, and that's basically how you'd want to play the trade um, because the idea is that once you're in this long position, then it's, it's sort of a set it and leave it and, uh, and hope it plays out. But obviously look to price action if you've got a big reversal candle formation, you know, an evening doji star uh, close to where the target level is, etc. cetera, then, um, then you'd obviously look to pull out of that pretty quick. Um, but it's all about locking in that first, that first part of the trade. So trying to get some money in the bank. So you've put, you've put your risk on the table. You've risked your two units, whatever they are, if they're, Two euros, twenty euros, a euro in two fifty cent lots. Um, you've put your risk on the table. You have to take some of your risk off. Okay, so when it gets to that first target, get off, stop to entry. You've then got your free trade uh, to try and push to the upside. Um, so that's what we're looking to do on euro dollar. I'm actually going to flip straight over to euro sterling only because um, I want to show why we've got more of a bias for buying euros. Uh, than we have um, cable at the moment. And even though ca cable is bullish and we're still looking to buy cable, Euro sterling looks like it's um, it's got more scope to move to the upside than than um, the sterling dollar. Okay, so Euro sterling, and again, this was sort of something that we flagged up um, last week. We turned around and said that the, the reason... The, the, the previous uh, ECB meeting, we'd basically done a report in the morning and said everything highlights euro lower. So we looked at euro yen, and the euro yen was in a head and shoulders formation. Or No, it wasn't actually. It was in an expanding wedge formation, which has an a, a eventual bias to break to the downside. We looked at sterling dollar, uh, sorry, euro dollar, that was a head and shoulders. Euro sterling was a head and shoulders. So we had all of these... Um, chart formations that highlighted lower euro this time round last week we turned and said hold on a minute we need to step back a bit we need to step back from this market that everybody's expecting to move to the downside because none of these euro cross uh, currencies really highlight a definitive path of, of, of euro lower and we basically said euro sterling could quite easily be a reverse head and shoulders formation um, and have a bias to break higher, not lower. Um, Tommy's just asking about Marabuzo. A Marabuzo is the open, you add the open and the close of the candle together and divide by two, not the high and the, and the low. It's the open and the close. Um, and a Marabuzo candle should really um, be quite solid, not nothing in the way of, or very little in the way of, um, of spikes in either direction. You really want a solid close. Um, so Euro Sterling, obviously a decent move to the upside. This is what we highlighted as a potential target area. Um, I'm just going to drop this off now. 
and the highlight while we're still uh, bullish on euro sterling. So let's just go down to the hourly. Just get a two hour chart on. So basically the daily chart highlighted these support areas. So this is previous support, this is previous support, this is previous support. So we knew this area around about 70 of the figure was, was a, a decent area of support. Now if we break down, and then we obviously got this impulse move, if we break this down into shorter time frames, okay, 61.8% is virtually being ignored on a strong rally up to the upside. 72.37 was a 261.8% extension level. However, it's broken through most of our bespoke resistance levels. Um, so the medium term bias is now one and truly skewed to, skewed to the upside. Um, if we look at this price action now, this is very mixed and volatile, which is uh, common in corrective formations. We've got the 261.8%, which should highlight that we're now in a bull run and any moves to the downside are corrective. We're just going to drop him off for a minute. Far too early to tell, but this could be a reverse head and shoulders. So left shoulder, head, and then a right shoulder here. Also, just note this trend line was resistance, resistance. Okay, so it should come in as support. Fib levels, okay, between 50 and 61.8%. Now, the 50% retracement level is at uh, 71.15. The 61.8% retracement level is, set, is at 70.83. Now, the reason I'm highlighting this and, and highlighting that it's got scope for a, a larger move to the downside is because there is scope for a larger move to the downside. But today, we're looking to buy more aggressively. And we've actually bought a dip at 71.70 this morning. Um, and that again is the intraday play. Um, so basically, this is a potential corrective flag. Now, this could quite easily be one, two, three, four, five up, and then one, two, three down, one, two, three up, or ABC, and then down again. These corrective patterns. Are by far the hardest patterns to um, to forecast, but if we use trend lines, if we use uh, retracement levels, if we use our bespoke support and resistance levels, then you know we're going to get some quite decent um, risk reward trades. Again, um, seventy one. So we've got a support level at seventy one seventy. We've got a support level at seventy one sixty. Really, the seventy one sixty level is also the Marabuzo level or close to the Marabuzo level from Thursday. So we wouldn't really want to breach and close below there. So basically the long trade that we're looking for today is to buy the dip, but really a close below 7160, a daily close to below 7160, and we're probably going to move more aggressively lower uh, towards this trend line support around about sort of 7110. Um, what we're looking for today is obviously a dip here, and then a move up towards sort of 7210, um, 7210, 7230 area as we as this choppy formation uh, plays out to the downside. Um, so that's that's the euro sterling bias, and then euro yen. Excuse me, that's the postman. I work from home. I've got euro yen charts on here. Let's quickly, let's quickly change these over. Bizarre how I've got them in one time frame and not another. I did say that I haven't touched these charts since uh, two weeks. 
Okay, so Euro Yen. Weekly chart. Now again, we sort of, one, there was one thing that's not disturbed us, but one thing that we were very aware of um, when we were doing um, our analysis a few weeks back was the fact that the move lower in Euro Yen wasn't as impulsive because obviously we've had that um, pretty much I think it's about 13 weeks of consolidation now in, in, in dollar yen and the move down in euro yen even though this was impulsive okay this was also impulsive and this this move was pretty corrective and we did actually highlight that not only did it look like a, a corrective channel formation but also the fact um, that on the day of the low I'm just trying to get my other charts up. On the day of the low, which was the 27th of November, DMARC posted one of these nine counts. So getting back to DMARC again, on this candle here, we, put, we, put, we posted a, a correction count. So basically highlighting or warning us um, that um, there's downside potential before a correction, at least a correction should take place, uh, was limited. And also, if we look to sort of fib levels, there was no sort of decent fib levels that should highlight that it was just a sort of pause of correction. And even sort of retracement levels. So nothing really highlighted a particular reason apart from a potential base of a channel. Um, apart from DMARC basically, um, that there was a potential low in place for um, for Euro Yen. But the bias is now strongly to the upside, okay? Um, over this week, I think we could see a, a larger correction, but then if we put a horizontal line on here, you know, visually we can see that that's pretty damn close to where the Marabuzo level probably will be. We've got a previous swing low here of 132.21, that was the 4th of September. And then back to the 19th of November, previous swing high of 132.26. So we know that this level is quite pivotal and we're also probably gonna get a Marabuzo level um, around about, um, around about that, that price as well coming into this week. So what we're looking for again, just on shorter time frames, is for dips to be bought into. Um, and I think our level to buy this morning or today is around about 133.05. Um, and again, it's, we're only looking, this is just in today, there's, no, there's nothing market moving or, or likely to be market moving in, uh, in today's calendar. So really, we're looking for mixed, choppy, volatile price action, but not aggressive moves in one way, in one direction or, or the other. So basically, you know, the intraday play is just to buy dips and then to get out when we've got sort of decent uh, risk reward levels, but also have it in the back of our mind that we are still, sorry, daily chart, that we are still playing in the direction of the overall trend but with scope for a larger correction over the next, you know, next few days. Um, so that's sort of covering all the Euro crosses. Like I said, buying dips in all of them uh, this week. Um, intraday dips or today's dips, we don't, could, could extend more aggressively as the week goes on. But until um, either the dollar takes new highs or until you know, the Marabuzo levels are smashed until you get through the fibs, etc., etc. The The bias is uh, is still to the upside. Has anybody got any questions about, um, about the crosses that we've covered up to now? Nope, cool. Uh, cable. Cable, cable, cable. 
And again, sort of monthly chart, breaking down through time frames. We're in a, a large um, corrective channel formation. Bias, well, we've got an outside bar here, uh, which was in, in March. You could say that that gives us a mild bias, bias to the upside, but not really. I mean, this is a continuation bear candle in, um, in November. Um, but what we do have, obviously, and again, sort of the move up from uh, Wednesday's low. You know, we bought it. It was bought. A dip was bought into on Thursday. No real sort of technical level. Didn't hit the channel base. I mean, this would have been a prime um, spot to get short, which was one forty-eight fifty-five, which is seventy-eight point six percent pullback, um, and the channel base. But what do we have? What we have is mixed and volatile price action to the downside in a corrective a corrective channel formation. If you saw that price action on a five minute or 10 minute chart, you would basically turn around and say, that's corrective. This is an impulse move, which is what I want to trade. This is corrective, so I want to buy dips really, or I want to buy a break, et cetera, et cetera. Just because it's a daily chart, it doesn't mean that the pattern is any different. All it means is that you just have to bide your time for a little bit longer, uh, maybe to get the, the, the levels that you're, that you're after. But we're still bullish, okay? Daily, we still have to be bullish because we have that strong upside move on Thursday. Friday, which if, if we look, is only um, a mild inside bar. In fact, it's probably in the top um, 3%, top third of um, Thursday's range, which highlights that the move to the downside is anything but um, impulsive. And then if we go down to an hourly chart, you probably see what I'm seeing already. Okay, it looks like a head and shoulders formation or worst case scenario. Um, a flag, what? What we do a lot of the time is we will buy off a right shoulder. There will be colleagues, old friends of mine, etc., that will be not devastated, but will but will we'll turn around and say, "Well, it's not a head and shoulders because a head and shoulders isn't confirmed until we get a breakout," which is technically correct. Okay, you have to break the neckline, and then you get your projection. So then you obviously take your head to your neckline and then project it from wherever it's broken out to get your target level. That is the correct, and that's the correct way to, to trade um, a head and shoulders breakout. With an increase in volume, there should also be an increase in volume uh, as it breaks the trend to the upside. But buying the dip, as long as it is technical, technically correct, offers extremely good risk reward because we're getting in um, maybe 100, 150 pips before the breakout. Um, we would only look to buy dips if the uh, dip, the right shoulder, lines up with something else. So if it lines up with a Marabuzo level, if it lines up with some of our bespoke support, then yes, we'd, 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 we'd look to buy it. If it doesn't, then we don't. It's, it's as easy as that. If it doesn't, then we'd prefer to uh, to buy the break or or, um, or look for a larger correction to the downside. So again, going back to this daily chart, we've got an open. If you look in the box on the left hand side, one forty nine fifty. We've got a close of one fifty one uh, one fifty one forty one. So. Basically, to get the Marabuzo level again, 149.50, which is your open, plus 151.41 divided by two, okay, which is 150.45. So we're trading around 57 at the moment. The right shoulder 
is around about 60 odd. Okay, so that area, that 1, 150, 60, 150, 40, is a good area to look to buy dips. Also, what's happened, the move lower looks mixed and, and volatile, which um, normally highlights it as a corrective pattern. Um, I suppose you could struggle and say, well, this is one, this is two. This little dip in the middle here is three and four, and that's five, and this choppy, Price action to the downside is is the ABC um, ABCD correction. Fib retracements. If you need a little bit more, you know, stopping underneath the 50 50 percent level of 150.25 offers a good risk reward trade. This is we've got to keep on reminding ourselves of what we're looking for. We're always looking for good risk reward trades. If we get in on this right shoulder, the, if this I know there's a lot of ifs. If this formation breaks to the upside, your risk reward is going to be 15, 20 to 1 if you held it the whole way, you know, with a 40, 50 tick stop. So the risk reward potential is uh, is very good indeed. Um, on Euro, the extension to the upside would be interrupted by the thoughts around the rate rise in the dollar. Well, yes. Um, Technically, te technicals and fundamentals. Obviously, a technical analyst believes that everything's in the market. So, basically, the market expectations are already written into the price. Um, I don't know what the uh, the Fed are going to do, FOMC, whether or not they're going to hike. Um, I'm quite religious about how much press I read. Over the weekend, I read the FT. I also, also read the, the the Sunday Times. A lot of analysts are basically turning around saying it's going to be a very softy, softly, softly uh, approach. So even if they do, you know, hike rates, it's going to be twenty five basis points, and it's going to be twenty five basis points, twenty five basis points. You know, we're not going to see an aggressive uh, move higher in uh, in US um, rates. They might not even do it. They might shock the market. ECB shocked the market last week. They might shock the market and not do anything on um, 17th of December, 16th, 17th of December. Um, you know, that really would put the cat amongst the pigeons. Um, but, you know, we're just... What is technical analysis? Technical analysis is reading charts and trying to read formations to get the best risk-reward trades. Um, and that's basically what we're looking to do. Yes, fundamentally, it's you, you're a bit hard pressed to be selling dollars too aggressively, and that's why we sort of said at the start of the uh, of the webinar today that you've got to look for the immediate bias. The immediate bias in the dollar at the moment is to the downside. So our immediate bias in euro dollar sterling dollar has to be to the upside. You know, we might get caught. We might, you know, our 30, 40 tick stops might not hold today. Um, are we going to get a bearish outside candle on a daily chart that then turns the bias negative today? No. What we're likely to get, and like we said, what we're most likely to get because of the lack of uh, fundamental releases today is inside days. I mean, if you look at cable, it's going to be some inside soldiers. Inside soldiers highlight lack of downside momentum. Okay, euro dollar. What we're going to get? Sorry, on the daily chart. More, more likely than not, inside days. Dollar Swiss daily. What we're likely to get? Inside days because there's no aggressive, if you like, reason for. For a, for a change in sentiment, there's profit taking, there's machines taking um, prices to different levels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you know, if I'd banked three, four hundred points on on Friday, I'll be quite happy to sort of be starting to to, to take some off the table, if you like. Um, and I don't know, has the technical shift changed? Yes, I think it has. I think I think the market has realised that, you know, the 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 differential or or the lack of um, aggressive 
uh, policy stance, which is probably not what what Draghi wanted, um, has moved away from him, and he's he's now he's now going to struggle, I think, to get it back. Um, you know, he had the opportunity to sh not shock the markets, but to give the markets what they expected, with which was a lot more, you know, aggressive EC, um, uh, quantitative easing, etc. Um, and that's just not happened. So, anyway, I think our time is up. So, if nobody's got any more questions, uh, I'd like to thank you all for for following today. Um, like I said, two weeks time, we should have a much clearer picture. Um, the markets, if they do do something on, in, obviously on the next policy meeting, um, liquidity levels can be pretty, pretty thin on that run, run into Christmas. And we might get some very aggressive moves in one direction or the other. If they don't do anything, then, you know, these target levels, these head and shoulders um, uh, extension levels, which, you know, at the, from, from current price, it's probably looking at about 400 points each currency pair. Um, they could quite easily play out and play out in a day. Um, but I can't see into the future, unfortunately. Um, okay, thanks very much for watching. Uh, I hope you find, found it both uh, entertaining, educational. Um, if you want to try um, a trial at, uh, at PIA, uh, we're actually offering free analysis until. Uh, at the end of the year we do actually close though on the 18th of december but if you sign up at the moment then we're refunding um people their first one month's um subscription um so anyway um thanks very much for watching and uh i'll speak to you again uh, probably after the christmas break now okay thanks very much bye now